My class, this is Ian Ferguson, and I have my presentation on some Russian music. Uh, Russian music is kind of near and dear to the heart. It's served in some Russian-speaking countries for my mission. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about kind of what I've learned and what I'm interested in. Uh, to start off with classical, I feel like we can't speak about Russian music without talking about Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. He was a Russian composer of the Romantic period. He was the first Russian composer whose music would make a lasting impression internationally. He wrote some of the most popular concert and theatric music in the current classical repertoire, including the ballets Swan Lake and the Nutcracker. He has some of his other famous concerts listed, as well as writing the Romeo and Juliet Overture Fantasy. Um, rap music in Russian culture has really become kind of the biggest hit now. In Russian hip hop refers to the hip hop music recorded in Russia or in the Russian language in the former Soviet states like Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Um, I was very familiar with mainly Ukrainian and Belarus rappers at the time because that's the area I served in. Um, now I've known some more bigger Russian rappers. Um, they've been included in soundtracks of some PC games and have also been part of some big memes on the internet. Um, Russian rap music is very interesting because you kind of take the fall of the Soviet Union and growing up in, you know, kind of a, a bunch of countries that have been just recently back to themselves. And they talk a lot about the struggles in their societies with that. And my favorite of the group would probably be Diego Creed. He has a song um, with a, another famous uh, Russian artist that, uh, I've been listening to a lot recently called um, If You Love Me Then Why Don't You Care uh, for rock music. Um, it started kind of in the 1960s, broke away from its Western roots. And according to many music critics, it's the golden age years were in the 1980s. Um, that's when the Soviet underground rock bands had just started to become able to release their records officially, and then since then, Russian artists and various other countries have developed a varied rock scene that covers virtually all rock genres, from classic alternative, punk, heavy metal, and the majority of Russian bands perform in the Russian language, but you can usually find some songs in English as well. And then the most popular slash nostalgic, the Red Army Choir, um, my favorite song by them would be Katusha. It, a lot of these songs were made back in the time of the Soviet Union. Uh, a lot of them are still used for wartime, military demonstrations, and so a lot of people know them over there. The most well-known one used in a lot of movies is Polinka. Um, and frequently it's seen in films where the action shifts to Russia or when a Russian character appears, it's like their theme song. Theme song. And then for my mission, the most popular song at the time was a Ukrainian song called Plakova by Kazka. And it became the first Ukrainian language song that peaked at number one in the world with over hundreds of millions of streams. And that is what I'd like to share with you is just uh, songs kind of from my mission, from the area I spent a lot of time in, and I still frequently will listen to a lot of these songs. So thank you.